they turn to stone. By Julian May. When you see a stone, pick it up. Maybe it feels a bit bumpy and strange. Look at the stone. Look very, very closely. Maybe it was once alive. Some stones were alive long, long ago. Maybe your stone is part of an animal that, was, that once lived in the sea. Maybe your stone is a part of a plant that lived in a forest millions and millions of years ago. Maybe your stone was part of a dinosaur or part of a big mammoth that looked like an elephant. Sea animals, plants, dinosaurs, mammoths, they lived long ago and died. And some of these plants and animals turned to stone. Stones of this kind are called fossils. Do most plants and animals turn to stone? No, it does not happen often. But things that die do not turn to stone. A dead fish on the shore does not stay there long, so it never becomes a fossil. The dead fish is food for other animals. Seagulls eat some of it. At night, crabs come and eat some more. Germs feed on the dead fish too. The germs are called decay bacteria. We cannot see them because they are so small. When these bacteria eat something, we say that the thing decays. Decay bacteria feed and feed on the fish's flesh. Soon, there is nothing left but a fish skeleton. Waves and wind and blowing sand break the skeleton. The bits are scattered far and wide. Now the dead fish has disappeared. Most dead plants and animals disappear on its way. This way. They do not turn to stone. But sometimes things are different. Here is a fish that turned into a fossil. It was found by a scientist. It lived long ago in what is now Wyoming. The fish lived in a lake. The muddy river flowed nearby. Mud from the river covered the fish. Soon after it died, birds and hungry animals could not find it and eat it. It lay deep in the mud. The river poured more and more mud on the dead fish. Decay bacteria ate the soft parts. Only the skeleton was left. The deep mud helped to save it. The mud became very, very deep. After millions of years, the mud turned to stone. The bony fish skeleton was inside the stone. All this happened 60 million years ago. Someday you may go to a place where there are many fossils. If you do, Look among the rocks, and if you are very lucky, you too may find a stone with a fish skeleton that is 60 million years old. Here are pictures of other fossils. These plants and animals died millions of years ago. 
They are all saved by being buried in mud. The mud turns to stone, and the plants and animals become fossils. How is a fossil formed? Let's see. Here is a picture of two dinosaurs that lived 75 million years ago in Canada. They fought each other and died. Swamp mud covered the dinosaurs. Bacteria ate the dinosaurs' flesh, but they hardly ate the bones at all. The swamp mud turned to stone. Water seeped into tiny cracks to the mudstone. It seeped into the tiny little holes and the cracks in the bones too. As the water seeped in it, it brought very tiny bits of mineral into the space where the bones were. Mineral is a hard substance that makes up stone. After a long time and the little cracks and holes in the bones became filled with this mineral. The bits of mineral stuck together. Millions of years passed. Then one day, a fossil hunter found the bones of the two dinosaurs. He painted them with shellac. The shellac kept the bones from breaking. You can see the dinosaur skeletons today. They are in a big museum. Many museums have such fossil skeletons. Perhaps you can find fossils. Do you live in the city? Many large buildings are made of limestone, often called marble. Fossils are often found in limestone. Look closely. Sometimes you can see fossil sea animals in the limestone. Limestone rocks can often be found in fields or hills. Crushed rock used in driveways may be limestone. Find some limestone that nobody wants. Crack the pieces with a hammer. You might find fossils like these. Look for fossils on the shore. Here are some strange looking stones with fossil sea animals in them. Try to find slabs of dark crumbly rock called shell sticking up in a field. You may be able to find fossil plants in the shale. Usually, all that's left of the plants is a thin layer of black carbon. Lumps of coal sometimes have bits of fossil plants in them too. Look for fossils in gullies. And look in places where a road has been cut through a hill. Once in a while, people find fossil bones sticking out of the hillside. The fossil is often harder than the crumbly rock around it. Large fossils should be left from, for scientists to remove. Some fossils break easily. Sometimes you can save them. Paint them with shellac as soon as you uncover them. See if you can make a fossil collection. Find the names of any fossils you discover. Look in books for pictures of them. Or take your fossils to a museum and ask someone to help you. When you pick up a stone, look at it. Look closely. Maybe it was once a while. Some living things million of years ago. The iguanodon was a type of dinosaur. Ooh. William Sona was a tree that had scales on his trunk. A pterodon was a reptile that could fly on long wings. A smilodon was a tiger with very long, sharp teeth. So it was called a saber-toothed tiger. <gasps> the end. When you see a stone, pick it up. Look at the stones. Look at it very, very closely. Maybe your stone is a fossil. Maybe 
millions of years ago, your stone was a living thing. Maybe it was a plant or a fish or a part of a dinosaur. This book tells you about fossils. Mm -hmm.